Please support our work by subscribing to our channel and never miss a new video. Thank you. Nowadays we often refer to the word thug as a swag. But do you know that this word originated from India in 13th century? The first organized crime group who killed people in the name of Mother Kali. Let's look deep into this mysterious group of fanatics who ravaged the travelers for nearly 600 years. So, who were these thugs? Thug is the Hindi word for deceit. They were considered the organized gang of professional assassins, associated with murder and robbery. They were also considered as the world's first mafia, who operated in India from 13th to 19th century. Their name was first mentioned in the book, History of Feroz Shah, 1356, by Zia Yudin Bani. Both Hindus and Muslims operated this group. They worshipped the Hindu goddess of destruction and renewal, Mother Kali. Thugs believed that they were born from the sweat of Kali to strangulate the demon Rakta Beach, whom Mother Kali was unable to kill, as the more blood you spilled the more demons would sprout, according to the mythical stories. Thugs believed in hereditary membership, and very few people were recruited from outside. Sometimes young children of victims were kept to allay suspicion and trained to become thugs in the future. How Thugs Operated The thugs maintained a high degree of teamwork and coordination as they were not ordinary thieves. They had three phases of operation. They are infiltration, gaining confidence and the moment of attack. The thugs generally operated during dry season from October to March. The thugs would travel in large groups and the scout would select the victims. The thugs would often disguise themselves as a band of musicians, seek merchants or high caste pilgrims. The chief of the group, called the Jimadar, possessed the quality of a charmer and had the ability to deceive travelers and would persuade them to join the group. The thugs will then gain confidence with the travelers to serve their purpose. Then one evening far away from the locals, they would set up a camp to take rest, patiently waiting for the best opportunity. The stranglers or betots then quietly position themselves behind each victim along with their helpers. Now the thug leader would use a cord, calling for a tobacco, the strangler would throw the scarf around the victims and garrot them to death. The thugs always made sure that the victims must be outnumbered. The instrument of killing was a handkerchief of khaki or orange color. They were very skilled assassins and carried their work very precisely and quickly. After killing the victim the bodies were stripped off their belongings and thrown into round graves dug beforehand. Death Toll These assassins never killed Brahmins, because of their purity. Sick people were considered as unworthy and women were not killed as they were considered as the reincarnation of Mother Kali. According to Guinness World Records, this thug cult was responsible for 2 million deaths. Political scientist David C. Rappaport estimated 500,000 people were killed by the thugs in a span of 500 years. Thug, Bihram, confessed that he himself strangled 931 men to death. This day too proves that they were merciless killers, and killed people to satisfy their god is mother Kali. All the killings were done away from the locals and dead bodies were always buried. The man, who suppressed the thugs of India. William Henry Sleeman, a British army officer and civil servant. This man suppressed the thug secret society. In 1835, Sleeman captured a thug named Faring Ear, also known as Syed A. Amir Ali. He was Muslim by religion and considered as the Prince of Thugs. He was the first lead of Sleeman, and took Sleeman to a grave with 100 dead bodies. He revealed the methods the thugs used to kill their victims. Sleeman came to know that the thugs killed people as acts of devotion to Mother Kali. 
This thug cult was actively protected by the kings and local princes in return for a share of their spoil. The British government established the Thug and Dacoity Department in 1835, with Sleeman as its lead. With Ferran Eel's aid, Sleeman started extensive campaigns and used the Thug's strategies against them. The campaign relied on captured Thug's, who became informant and was protected by the British government. Thousands of thugs were imprisoned, executed and expelled. Finally after 600 years of wreaking havoc by killing people in the name of Mother Kali, by the end of the 18th century the cult slowly extinguished. But, their reputation still exists, the word thug is now used to refer to violence and aggression. A book was written, named, The Confessions of a Thug, based on Faring Ear's experience. The Indian movie, Thugs of Hindustan, is based on this book and will picture many untold stories about this secret cult of assassins. Please support our work by subscribing to our channel and never miss a new video. Thank you.